Don't laugh, it could be your daughter inside. Those thoughts must cross the mind of many an anxious mother as one of these powerful V8 mag-wheeled four-on-the-floor traveling gin palaces roars past. <laughs> The Australian panel van has really become the symbol of a cult. They're often capable of very high speeds, and the fastest are bristling with extras, some of them highly illegal. There's a sort of competitive jonesmanship about the cult, to see who can make his panel van look faster, more aggressive, more powerful and sexually enticing than anyone else's. At this meeting of the South Australian Panel Van Club, there were 62 vans, some of them costing over $8,000 each. There are not too many uh, car clubs or motorcycle clubs or even general social groups that you can join that have so much social activity as what our club does. A lot of people sort of seeing you whizzing past the road would say oh, some of you are probably a menace to the road. Is that the case? Uh, not from our point of view. As far as we're concerned, a lot of them that crawl along under the speed limit in the inside oh, lane, which we normally occupy, are more of a hazard than what we are. It's like a long convoy of trucks. It's sort of, you get people want to cutting in out at times. We've got to pass someone. You've got about 50 vans passing the same car. They send gee, you've got a mobile out, say, oh, you know. We, we, we pretty well. You know, we, we don't go out of the system, really. What about the police? Do they have a go at you? Not no, in Convoy, no. We haven't had any trouble with the police whatsoever. And when they get to their destination, the result is cacophony. Thousands of dollars worth of stereophonic and quadraphonic sound equipment blaring out thousands of different tunes. And many of these vans have over 400 feet of wiring installed. And that's not all. This Holden Statesman Panel Van Special is really a luxury passion wagon. Its owner claims that the extras installed make it worth $21,000. And just about the only thing it hasn't got is a waterbed. When did the actual panel van cult first start? About five years ago, the, uh, the chaps are tending to go down the beach a lot and do a lot of weekend touring in their vans. And uh, I think it, it gradually started to roll from there and they formed groups and then they formed clubs. And uh, they initially, they, they got going like that, I think. It wasn't a sort of spin-off from America? Or no, it wasn't a spin-off from America. I think they found themselves down the beach in small groups and they got together and they got their own little circle of friends. Then they decided that there were so many of them, it might be a good idea to form clubs and uh, get around together and do things together and uh, have social events and this sort of thing. And the clubs eventuated and, and initially began about three years ago. This really is a complete travelling gin palace, colour television, quadraphonic radio the lo and sound a lot. Uh, do you ever actually use it as such? Uh, most of the guys do. I've slept this van in particular. I've done a lot of travelling in this and a lot of sleeping. And with motel accommodation fees the way they are, and, and uh, say twenty-two dollars a night, uh, they're terribly practical. And you've got the the cocktail bars here if you want a little sip when you're off the road and not driving anymore. The TV sets they they tend to work for quite a distance away from the main cities, and they're really quite practical. There are some vans around that you couldn't sleep in, but uh, this one I've tried to keep practical, and most of them are kept on the same lines. <laughs> The commercial world has lost no time in taking full advantage of the panel van cult. So far, most of the vans have been General Motors or Ford, but now it looks as if Chrysler is getting in on the act. This is Chrysler's first panel van, the souped-up, luxurious denim machine. The cult is expanding, and already there are well over 5,000 panel vans registered with clubs in Australia. 
and one wonders if it's all for one very basic reason. Most people look upon them as uh, girl-catching sin bins. Does it make any difference to your sexual prowess, do you think? No, that's the, the names they've been labelled with. Uh, for years and years people have called them that, but let's face it, they've, this is the sort of thing's been going on at drive-in theatres for 50 years anyway. Uh, just nowadays we're doing it in more comfort. So you want to grab a girl, leap into the back of a panel van, get her pickled with your cocktail cabinet, turn on the stereo and let nature take its course. And if it doesn't, there's always the television set to fall back on. Oh, and by the way, don't make the same mistake as some of these fellows. Their panel vans didn't give them a chance to sow any wild oats. It just got him a wife.